Hello. Can you hear me? Hi, Gabe. Yeah, I can hear it. There we go. Yeah, good to see you. See me, see me as well. Great. Awesome. So, um, do you mind if I record this for the team? Yeah, members? go for it. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Where are you located right now? So you're right now you're in. I'm in uh, Chiang Mai, Thailand. It's uh, northern Thailand. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm in a little part of town where more of the locals live, and I'm close to the close to local markets. And uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm out here for uh, a total of three months. I've got another week and a half before I leave. What are you doing over there? Um, sort of taking sabbatical. Uh, I had a company in the last uh, five years that has uh, totally bombed, and uh, I'm sort of trying to figure out what uh, what to do next with myself, and uh, you know how to transfer my skills to something you know meaningful and enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, so I'm just taking a little bit of time to uh, to uh, hopefully come up with something that feels right, like job-wise and location-wise, you know? Yeah, yeah. What was the company that you just had? What was that about? Just wondering how, how our connection Yeah, is. maybe... Hey, maybe uh, turn off the video. See if we can. That would be a little better. Let me let me grab a Ethernet cord real quick. Yeah, no, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to switch it to uh, my phone service is usually faster, and uh, I'm gonna try to switch over to that and see if that gives us. Sorry about that. Let me. Uh, no, no. I think it's on my end. Um, the internet in my building is is sometimes great and sometimes not, and it's unpredictable. Okay. Uh, but but my uh, my data service on my phone is pretty reliable, so I just switched over to my uh, my phone data. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Um, pretty cool. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you're interested in doing a, the third month of the serving as a teacher? You also mentioned about. Uh, doing like two weeks before that um, to get accustomed to to how we do things so yeah yeah, yeah. it seems you know I'm, I've been reading up on your material and uh, it seems like you have a pretty uh, refined uh, method I can switch on my video too we can try it um, pretty refined method of, uh, of doing things and uh, you know my goal you know when I come into something you know like that is to you know get a feel for the culture get a feel for what's going on and uh, you know, I like to do my best to adapt to, you know, a system that seems to be working. And, um, and, uh, and that just seemed like a nice opportunity. I have the, I have the time a little bit. Um, and, uh, and I also believe it would help me do a better job, you know, just, you know, just getting in it and, uh, and helping out for a couple of weeks, you know, beforehand, I feel like, uh, it'll allow me to just, you know, slip into, mm -hmm. you know, the, you know, the systems that you guys use quite a yeah. bit. So, and, and then if not, you know, I plan on just like really diving into your methodology and starting to, you know, do, you know, work on the um, daily logs and, you know, use that for my own projects as, you know, and as I develop material for, for, uh, for, you know, the workshop you're, you're hosting. Um, yeah. Tell me about the, the role you had at Apropedia. Were you one of the Apropedia? Um, I don't know if I was one of the founders. Uh, I can't say I was one of the founders. No, um, I work very closely with Lonnie in uh, in a mm -hmm. lot of projects, and um, mm. I I had uh, I had created a similar organization um, it, when I was going to school at uh, Evergreen up in up in Washington, uh, and it was it wasn't an online organization. It was uh, it was you know, students at Evergreen for ecological design. You know, it's just um, it was just mostly for the students there, and I would lead tours of uh, local you know, ecological design, you know, 
entities and, and I, you know, created a library and, and set up a library for students to educate themselves. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then we also had a, um, uh, Evergreen was developing a home similar to CCAT at, uh, in Arcata, you know, Campus Center for Appropriate Technology. And, and, uh, so we started integrating with them quite a bit. And so I, you know, I definitely have a love for ecological design and sustainability. And then, uh, and then when Lonnie started that, uh, you know, we were already working together on projects and, and uh, close friends by then. And so I just, I just started in and helped with a lot of the technical stuff. You know, he was working on uh, developing the, the web page for his classmates or for his students. And, uh, and so I just, I just came in and started working out details on making the wiki better. And, uh, and also preserving the data. So I, I sort of rolled back then. There wasn't a lot of options for backing, back upping data, uh, backing up data. And so I just developed a sort of a Unix based system uh, or Linux based system to just, you know, back up the data regularly and make mm -hmm. sure that uh, when we do updates, you know, that bad things didn't happen. I think there was one, one time where we lost a big chunk of data at the beginning. So mm -hmm. I came in and uh, made sure that, you know, data preservation was there. And then, um, yeah, and then it, it sort of started taking off, and I got busy with uh, with other projects in school and things like that. So I didn't I didn't stick with it for too long, but I've been sort of watching it grow the whole time. Yeah, do you are you familiar with MediaWiki pretty well, like the back end? Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I was. I don't know how it's evolved since then. You know, I was I got pretty intimately familiar with it then and felt pretty comfortable, uh, you know, updating it and modifying things. Um, and, and setting things up for you know for automation and mm -hmm. developing templates and and uh, you know getting familiar with all the different you know spaces that are involved okay. there. Um, you, some of it still obscure. Yeah, continue. I was going to ask: Did you work some of the semantic aspects of it, or? I love semantic wiki. Um, I you know semantics. Um, I didn't. Uh, I studied it and um, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it was more out of personal joy. Uh, I just feel like that's a aspect of the internet that needs to happen much more. And I, and I'm, it's sort of happened, but still, I feel like it's just, it still needs to happen so much more. You know, I just love data accessibility and, and classification of data. Um, I just feel like it just would make things so much easier if it was more, more wide scale. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I do have a love for semantic wiki and, uh, and I'm actually looking for my own project work. I'm uh, looking at ways to, um, incorporate semantics um, in in sort of a different paradigm. You know, I I, uh, I think uh, the way the wiki's done it is great um, for the for the medium, but I'd love to explore ways to I don't know ways for people to use semantics in you know mm -hmm. in all the material that they produce. Yeah, yeah whether it's on the wiki or not. Right. We've looked into that a little bit uh, when I was actually talking to Lonnie about that some time ago. We never ended up doing anything ab about it. We don't, we don't have, to yeah. have to do that, but uh, interesting concept. There's some, uh, yeah, there's some headless CMS um, platforms that are open that uh, that I'm looking at right now that, that look really intriguing for me. And um, I, you know, I'm not really sure how to integrate it with, uh, you know, your own file system. But I'm, mm -hmm. but I'm, uh, but I'm just sort of keeping my eye on, on it because I feel like there's a lot of potential there and uh, just a lot of personal interest for organization. Yeah, what's your level of experience with teaching? Um, I don't have a lot. Um, you know what I said in my email is is my experience. I you know I teach I teach dance, so I teach dance to class you know to individuals and uh, what and kind to of lots dance? of students. Um, I do mostly fusion dance, which is uh, yeah, it's sort of a it's a dance form that's picked up on the east and west coast, uh, especially in the Bay Area, and uh, it's essentially anyone who's had multiple experiences with dance uh, takes what they know and they get together with somebody else that has multiple experiences you know like you know say you you learn salsa and uh, blues or something like that and uh, and you get together songs playing and it's an exercise in connection and you really try to feel out what they know and what you know and try to find the middle ground so you can dance together and there's a clear lead and a clear follow like oh. in ballroom dancing but but you don't necessarily know the same steps and so it's sort of a fun experiment and oh. uh, and really, really beautiful moments come out of it. It's really kind of fun, and and what's what's the, the challenge is and the reward is is refining your connection and really listening to the other person and and figuring out how you guys can meld together with with your differing knowledge and uh, 
yeah, I mean, I love it on the dance floor and I kind of love it symbolically as well, you know, as far as like working with different people. Yeah. Um, so I teach, I teach that and then um, while I continue trying to learn other dance forms to integrate with it. And then, uh, and then my other experience is more one-on-one, -on -one, you know, as we had interns, um, you know, with their business. Uh, I, had, I had a business with Lonnie. And, uh, and so we would, we would cycle through a set of interns every summer. And so I would develop material for them and uh, tasks for them. And the, the last one I did was the most relevant and valuable to me and felt most like teaching. Um, and it wasn't really teaching. They're, they're advanced students. And I just, I just made their, uh, I, I sort of developed their trajectory and planned the, the three months that they're going to be with us by, you know, what they needed to learn and gave them, you know, gave them the materials to learn and uh, checked up along the way and discussed along the way and, and continually, continually opened it up for, you know, exploration, you know, whatever questions they have and noting their ideas. Uh, my philosophy behind it was, you know, these are smart people and, uh, you know, they might come up with some great ideas that are beyond what I've come up with, you know. And so, so whether they did or not, I felt like the, my teaching trajectory was, uh, was going to be uh, valuable and worthwhile for them and worthwhile for us as a company. So I sort of structured it that way, uh, but also left open for uh, creativity so that possibly they might come up with something new and more interesting. Uh, and I really like that. You know, I like the, I like embedding a certain level of respect for everyone involved. You know, even though they're learning and they're new, you know, I think it's a sort of a multidisciplinary exercise that's important to maintain. Like whoever you're working with, they might bring something new to the table. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I so I did that, and and that was great, and that was just that was just uh, three students, and then one of them dropped out midway, so it ended up just being two students. Um, so it was sort of an intensive two student thing while I was doing my other my, my main job. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's my experience of teaching, and so um, you know that's one of my, one of the reasons I'd like to come a couple weeks ahead of time and just get a feel for your your stuff. Uh, I'm pretty good with people uh, as far as like teaching. Um, uh, I, you know, I got a report from my students after they were a little intimidated by me at first, you know, um, and they, I think they ended up working harder because of it. So I think that's good. Uh, but, you know, a month into the program, they realized that, you know, where my intentions were, and, you know, I'm just, I'm serious about getting the work done and having stuff, you know, having stuff work and having them accomplish stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it was good. I think they realized that my intention wasn't to be, I'm not trying to be mean or anything. I'm just, you know, we're, we're here to get something done. And, uh, and I wanted to make, make the most of their, you know, their exercises, you know, they were, I was sending them on a journey of stuff that I didn't fully know. You know, I don't, I'm not a programmer in Python and uh, I was having them, I know enough about programming to guide them, but also I was having them learn, learn Python to, you know, to work with um, uh, a database system. So, yeah. Uh, What's, yeah. what was the, the business that you ran that didn't succeed in the last five years? What was that business? That one's uh, it's called Nexi and Canary Instruments, and we we made an electronic device that uh, helps people with behavior change around their electricity use in their home. And so uh, you can look up meetnexi.com um, just to see the webpage that's still there. Mm -hmm. um, M e e t n e x i, and uh, we uh, yeah we I I developed a prototype that was a working prototype, and we ended up selling almost a billion dollars worth of that product uh, and. Uh, and it got into a bunch of net zero housing in California, uh, which were also being studied by uh, some uh, NGOs to develop energy policy. So a lot of our data has been used to influence uh, energy policy in California, which in turn will be you know, used to affect, um, affect the energy policy across the US because California is sort of ahead on, uh, on analyzing that stuff. Um, yeah, and the product was great. People loved it uh, when you have one, you know, people end up saving about 10% of their elect electricity bill. And it's mostly just a heads up display that we made as beautiful as we can without ha people having to interpret numbers. You know, nobody, nobody knows what kilowatt hours are in the public sector, you know. And, and right. uh, so we just communicated through color and light pattern. And, um, you know, humans have a great pattern recognition brain, you know, that's what we do really well. So after living with it for a few days, they just sort of got it. Uh, so it's really easy to understand, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, no, it's it's uh, very disappointing to me. It's it um, it did not fail because we had lack of interest or lack of a market and lack of sales. Um, we had a CEO that just wasn't wasn't very good, and she never found funding for us. 
And so we just, our runway just ran out mm. and, uh, and I'm not necessarily, I'm not a money person and Lonnie's not really interested in money either. So it's not like we want to stop and start pursuing investors. And so we just kind of decided to let it go. I mean, theoretically we could pick it up again if, if an investor was interested and found mm. us, but, but, uh, and I, I still sort of, you know, as, you know, as I'm sort of in limbo right now, you know, part of me thinks, well, I, I could just take that up again, you know, but, uh, mm. But I'm sort of excited about something new. Yeah. What are you gravitating towards? You, you got any um, ideas of what that would be for your next life? Yeah, um, I do. Um, I, you know, I love, I love to say, I love lighting. Um, that's one of the areas. I imagine I would, do, I would do it as, uh, as my retirement career, something that I didn't have to rely on because that's sort of an artistic realm as well. I designed chandeliers in New York for several years, uh, product design, and that's where a lot of my fabrication, you know, uh, knowledge comes from. And, uh, and I'd really like to develop beautiful lights that are, that are all, you know, LED based, you know, and I know that's happening, but I also, it's, it's sort of a, it's sort of an artistic beauty experience for me. Um, so that's one idea, but I think that's probably in the future. Um, I've got a couple, there's a couple business ideas that I would love to do, but that's also something that takes funding. So I'm sort of just slowly working on those and maybe, maybe I'll get lucky and meet somebody that's interested. Um, and one of those is in, uh, in, um, uh, uh, documentation, you know, like I, I survived five years of documenting for my company and, and, uh, I just learned a tremendous amount and I feel like. Uh, I feel like what I've learned and what I studied from how large corporations do it, I feel like I could take what large corporations do and, and condense it into some system that would allow small businesses and startups to to do better with their documentation. So that's one idea. And then um, and then I may just you know start freelancing with my design work just for a little while, just to give myself more time. You know, I really enjoy uh, 3D design and parametric design, so I might start doing that more. Um, yeah, so those those are the things. Um, there's some qualities that I'm looking for more. Um, uh, I'm more interested in finding a team of people that are smart and engaged, and uh, you know, I want you know some people I want to collaborate with. You know, so you know that could be almost anything, and you know, hope preferably use my design skills and organizational skills. Uh, so I'm kind of open to that. I might be I might end up moving you know to a metropolis somewhere and looking for you know, a startup or a company that's doing something that I believe in, you know, and uh, yeah, I just want to feel engaged with other people, which would be, which would be really nice. So, and I'm not really sure which, which uh, specific industry that would, that would take right now. Tell me more about your organizational skills. So what, what kind of stuff are you talking about? Um, the organizational skills, you know, I, I really like systems. And so, uh, you know, I like to look at how things are moving and find the, the, problem areas that people have and I feel like a lot of people don't really see the problem they sort of just churn through stuff and I really like to find ways to simplify simplify them and automate them um, the organizational skills is uh, um, if you know if I were to create a company around it you know a lot of it's based on you know the transclusion aspect of, of wiki you know that's uh, wikis introduced transclusion um, much more since since when I was messing with it and uh, um, it, it, are you familiar with transclusion? It's pretty much you write, you one do the work once. Another? Yeah, one wiki to another. It's, you know, say you have a, a page section and uh, and you've you know you've developed it, and so you can instead of you know editing it multiple places, you just you know you just do a reference to that section and uh, and build new documents based on uh, modular data. So I'm really interested in the modular uh, buildup of of information, and uh, and so, you know that's why I like. A lot of what you're doing, you're using Wiki as a, in a modular way, which is pretty cool. And uh, um, yeah, so it's a lot of a lot of the organization for me is managing the data. So you can communicate to your different uh, either either your clients, new employees, investors, you know, whoever you have to communicate with. You know, you know, being able to access your data much quick, much more quickly without having to rewrite everything. Huh? Have you seen our? Uh... <clears throat> announcement for the event planner so we're running the steam camps right now i don't know if you've seen those is that something that might be interesting to you by any chance like uh, uh i can like see that you did yeah i did not see it but i thought i mean it sounds interesting to me immediately um and uh so i should look check that link out is it in the job section yeah it is there actually uh, 
um, we'll take a look at, I'm going to send you the link right now to the Steam Camps, but right. the thing is, I don't know if that's related to data, but right now we're trying to scale these, basically think of a global collaborative effort where a bunch uh -huh. of so-called hackathons or these Steam Camps, so open source microfactory yeah. Steam Camps, they happen at the same yeah. time, we're doing real product development, super collaborative methods, mm -hmm. 500 people or more scale it. I mean, right yeah. now we're at a few people, like a dozen or two, but right. uh, scale it to hundreds and then get some serious design done in periods of five days. So once again, do the swarm um, massive yeah. collaboration protocols. Um, but yeah, that's that's what we're working on to develop. And um, I mean, you definitely get a feel for what that's about uh, if, you're, if you're coming here. Yeah, um, what's, your, what's your timeline for that? Um, you know, is that something that you could see happening after this uh after this uh this summer and well, like i could you know get a feel for what's going on and figure out how to like you know ways to you know expand yeah yeah absolutely expand. i mean uh, we're we're doing the steam camps right now and for september we're actually planning the kickoff of an incentive challenge on the 3d yeah. professional grade cordless drill uh, made from trash mm -hmm. kind of deal uh so we're gonna do mm -hmm. so actually you got mitch altman i don't know if you know the name mitch altman no, but I will write it down and uh, check him out. So we got I'm him interested. Sure. I'm totally He's a okay. notable figure in the hackerspace movement, but okay. we're just planning, uh, just started to plan an event in September. So like, ideally, it, it may merge like 10 or 20 uh, hackerspaces that do this at the same time. So according to the Steam Camp model. That sounds great. So yeah, we're trying to scale that. But but the whole issue there is it's that's management of that program. So we're looking for somebody. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if how that fits in your interest, if you're interested more in like data management. But this is like the grand challenge of data management for mass collaboration. And here, oh. the particular position is more about, okay, organize event manager to event planner, right. um, event right. planner to actually yeah. run these events and coordinate them across the different locations. But one, one interesting thing there would be um, in that role actually would be a person who, who's kind of like the coordinator, the internet based coordinator who would uh, yeah. look into all the events and coordinate them. So that would be mm -hmm. kind of the collaboration incubator position in that that's, that's to happen in this. So, so that kind of um, an event lends itself to a lot of collaboration, really pushing the limits of how we can make for effective crowd design oh, that might be interesting yeah yeah um, no I, I love it and uh and uh it's something that i'm just gonna start start checking out and looking at and looking at the structure and seeing if uh seeing if i it inspires some ideas and mm -hmm. uh you know already i feel like your your structure is pretty amazing as far as your uh extreme builds you know doing things in a short amount of time you know with mm -hmm. the sort of like hive set hive st uh, type structure um yeah. it's really inspiring and um, I'm, I'm really excited to get a feel for that, you know, um, you know, just being able to crank through stuff with, uh, you know, when, when you have the knowledge really clear and, and then the, the skill set division and, uh, and, you know, you got the people to, be, you know, to break up into different, different groups, it just kind of, really, you know, starts becoming very exciting to watch it all come together. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's really exciting what you're doing. And, uh, and I'm super interested. So if that's something I'll just start, I'll just start checking out and, uh, feeling out more you know in the time being you know start reading up more on your steam projects and uh look at the documentation and you know if i you know if i develop any questions about how things are running yeah you know i'll just what's, i'll send i'll send you a little message yeah what's your uh schedule like like right now coming into the summer i mean you're you're kind of somewhat in limbo it's like pretty, you're looking for your next step yeah it's pretty open um i'm gonna spend the next month just sort of uh working on my portfolio like because i i hate doing that um uh I, you know i don't like working on old projects and to me that's you know it's like stuff that's already done and i don't want to do it but it's, it's an essential thing to organize it start you mean? Just shopping what was that you mean to organize your portfolio yeah well the thing is i i haven't documented my stuff very well and so there's a lot of stuff where i just do i just get it done and then uh and then move on to the next thing and so so it's, you know i, I want to do a little bit of a deeper look so i can present it well um and uh but yeah organizing the portfolio and uh um you know there's a few projects in my parametric modeling that i want to dive in and it's going to be like relearning the skills because i probably didn't write down the details very well yeah. um you know, but it's all done. So I want to dive in because it's third projects that are worth, you know, preserving and presenting. So uh, I'm going to be working on that a little bit. And then, um, 
And then, uh, so that's for the next month. And then, um, and I'm going to be in Vietnam for the next month. And then after that, I'm going to Sydney, Australia, where my time is pretty open. Um, I mostly, I've chosen to just babysit for my nephew. My sister uh, just got a new job in Sydney, and uh, she needs some help watching watching uh, her son. And uh, it's sort of an opportunity to be around family. And so I, you know, aside from watching him for a few hours in the evening, I have a lot of a lot of time um, in Australia right now. Or, Are you, know, you coming from up. Australia? No, I'm not. I'm I'm born in Canada. Uh, from Canada, but I mostly grew up in California. Hmm. You know, I moved there when I was about seven years old, and uh, you know, culturally, I feel like I'm California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, as yeah. far as your extensive treatise on all the open workflows and open source workflow, mm -hmm. CAD design, and everything else, uh, that was pretty good. Uh, so, where'd you pick up all of that uh, over time? I mean, where where did it all come from? Um, yeah, it all came from me liking to develop my own systems and being an unhappy, being tied in. You know, I like a long time ago I switched from Apple to PC because I wanted to build my own computer and I wanted control over it. And, and uh, from Apple to PC. And, yeah, yeah, a long time ago. You know, back in uh, 1996 or 1995, I switched. I switched to PC because I just wanted to be able to do my own stuff. And then, you know, now Apple's gotten a little bit better about that stuff, but still the ecosystem is a lot more free with the PC. Um, and it's a little surprising I haven't fully dived into Linux, but uh, most of my design software requires PCs, so I stick with it. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's sort of the fundamental. I like to sort of have control over my stuff. Uh, and so I'm always looking for tools for things I want to do. I, I get involved in a lot of little projects. I have a lot of interests. And so anytime I have a new interest or a new project, I, I sort of scan scan the horizon for stuff that's available, that's, uh, that's freely available, that, uh, that might work for, for my needs. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always sort of just testing stuff out and checking it and evaluating and trying to find tools that I really like. Yeah. Um, my design stuff came, you know, I... I graduated, um, I got a degree in applied mathematics, and uh, I really wanted to stay in Arcata, and there's nothing, um, no jobs for anything like that there. And so the closest thing I could find, you know, was to modeling the real world, was modeling it in CAD, you know, so I found a design job, you know, working in CAD. So in my mind, it felt similar. I'm, I'm modeling the world, you know, dimension dimensionally and uh, designing for it. And, uh, you know, it wasn't mathematically intensive, but to me, it sort of fit the same place in my brain. And uh, I found a job. I didn't know CAD, and so I just stayed up for three days learning CAD and uh, learned enough to get the job, and um, and then worked there and started developing systems there, and then moved to another company in town. Um, and, you know, they offered me a raise, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, just kept on developing my CAD skills with that. And through that, I was I was working in three D. Uh, you know, it was before three D was very popular. Uh, this is in um, two thousand and three, two thousand four. Um, it was just starting, but I was pushing AutoCAD to the maximum, you know, as far as I was, I was designing stuff in 3D and AutoCAD, which is a total mess, but I, but I, it just, it allowed me to design once um, and not screw up as much, you know, I could just fit everything together so much better in 3D. Uh, and then the next uh, company I worked for, they were interested in it, and so I started evaluating some 3D software that was specific for uh, architectural design stuff. And uh, wasn't very happy with it. So when I quit, I quit that job and traveled for a little while and sort of assessed everything on, on the market and ended up settling on Rhino, which seemed to be, you know, the most cost effective out of all of them, but also really powerful and, you know, allowed for a lot of creativity. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't find anything open source for a very long time. You know, it wasn't until FreeCAD came out that I, you know, was, you know, content. You know, I was really sort of disappointed. With a lot of the stuff, and you know, understandably, it's a, it's a it's sort of a big endeavor to develop CAD software. It seems. Um, How much free CAD yeah, experience so do I, you have? Do you, are you good at it? Or? I, I don't have, I don't have tons, but I have so much CAD experience that um, that I understand it already. You know, it's 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 really modeled after after uh, SolidWorks. You know, it's uh, it's the same as SolidWorks, um, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, all the, all the concepts are pretty much there. So I don't have tons, and if you want. Uh, if you want me to have more, I'll I'll just go ahead and design something, you know, and or 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 put something into 3D for you, sometime, you know. I'll probably work on it more anyway because I, I have a pretty high standard of um, needing to know my shit before presenting it to other people. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a little bit of time before 
before our event or before uh before you think uh our, yeah. you know a lot of people that have a lot too much experience they might be handicapped in that oh I, you know they they're used to some process and they don't want to learn the new thing can you learn the new thing in freecad i love learning new things yeah okay. yeah no, i think it's no problem because um, i mean it's interesting yeah. how some people who are very familiar with other software they're they're like they have a harder yeah. time than a beginner you know yeah, yeah, it's true. You know, I'm learning a new dance form right now, and I'm very frustrated because I like I have so much experience, and it's very humbling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, oh, why do I? Why is it so hard? But um, yeah. no, at FreeCAD, you know, from from all the stuff I've done in FreeCAD, it's very similar to SolidWorks, and I've I've continued to use that. Uh, it's a different parametric design than uh, than Grasshopper allows with Rhino, and uh, and certain products really require that uh, that style of parametric design, and so. You know, I so I've been going back and forth between Rhino and SolidWorks for a long time, and, and FreeCAD is very, very similar to SolidWorks, mm -hmm. and uh, and um, and the you know foundational ideas on how to how to build something. Yeah. Um, how would you? And also, I, uh, sorry, I also have a big incentive to ditch SolidWorks because I, I hate the company. You know, it's like I, I need I need FreeCAD really because. Uh, how come SolidWorks you don't like SolidWorks? A, um, they. They're one of the most expensive CAD softwares, mm -hmm. and they force you to upgrade every year, which is four to five thousand dollars a seat. Wow! Um, and uh, you know they make every year not backwards compatible with the previous years. And so, if you want to be relevant in the industry, you're you're forced to buy new software every single year. Wow! And uh, it's just kind of I just feel like it's rude. And what a racket! Kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really <laughs> inappropriate. So, Four to five thousand. So, they force you to essentially upgrade every year. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't, you know, and you start getting, you know, stuff from a client or something like that, or, or working with another company, you know, if, if you have to interact with anyone else, you're you're screwed, and you're sort of forced to pay that money. And wow. um, I mean, of course, you can ask the new people, like, hey, can you save in the old version? But you know, I think people want to save face. They don't, you know, that looks unprofessional if you if you're asking them to save in the old version for you. You know, I'm not really sure. I mean, you know, but. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, I think you can. Oh, I forget. I actually forget now if you are even allowed to save in the old version. You can open up new versions, and it automatically updates it to the new version next time you save it. No, you can't. It really forces you up. Um, it's very frustrating. You can export and lose the history. You can export like uh, you know IGS or STDP files, um, and so it's, it really aggravates me. And and, uh, and there's a lot of little things in there. I end up swearing a lot. Like it's it's a workflow that I swear a lot at. You know, yeah. <laughs> there's just some things that I feel like they just never addressed. Certain bugs that they've never addressed. Hmm. Um, hmm. But mostly, it's their financial model that I think is really rude. And uh, rude. And I'm pretty excited about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good. <laughs> so one that's my effort about how it works. Uh -huh. yeah. And um, how do, how would you rate yourself as an entrepreneur? Um, well, I, I feel like I'm pretty great as far as innovative stuff and new ideas. Um, I have a patent that's licensed, licensed which is cool. Um, developing, you know, developing this uh, Nexi product has been pretty, pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, uh, you know, it depends on what size. Like developing products and developing ideas and making them real, I think I'm very good at. Uh, the financial side, I've never really wanted to pay attention. So, you know, if I was going to run the financial side of it. Uh, you know, I'd probably want to collaborate with somebody. Um, you know, something I've yet to learn. What about the aspect of when you're designing, you you keep the cost in the back of your mind, so the cost calculations are in the back of your mind, or no? Oh yeah, I'm really great at that. Um, yeah, um, I'm super frugal. I live a, a pretty frugal life. Um, I don't like to live in excess, and uh, um, and uh, yeah, and so all my projects pretty much come under budget. You know, like I developed an electronic project for you know, under $200,000, it was marketable and we, you know, sold a million dollars of it, you know, um, you know, and that's including, you know, multiple employees and development and, you know, and hiring out, you know, contractors and manufacturing and, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and doing a pretty good timeline. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I really like, it's sort of, it's sort of a game to try to figure out how to do it, uh, cost effectively and, and find, uh, find compatible products that might cost less that, you know, if I'm integrating other products into, into things. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The bill of materials is super important, and uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty. I've got my eye on on the bill of materials quite yeah. a bit, um, and also processes. You know, you know, you can save a lot of money in processes if you can find more efficient means of doing. You know, creating something. You know, and, and I enjoy that aspect as well. So, like production engineering. 
Yeah, production engineering, you know, um, yeah, exactly. Um, what else? Tell I've me got, about, uh, you, are you familiar with any any power electronics stuff or like do you actually know some electronics design like KiCad? No, I don't. I mean, I've messed with it. I've done uh, I've done it to troubleshoot some of our stuff. You know, we've got our circuit boards. I'll load them up and and uh, navigate them for troubleshooting. You know, we had a couple issues um, in manufacturing uh, a couple times, and so I, I would just you know learn what I needed to learn and, and navigate it. But but uh, but I would not claim to uh, claim proficiency in uh, electronics CAD. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... When you say you design some products, like at what level of design? I mean, that was basically product design, at, not at the technical level, but at the product yeah, design the, level? Yeah, the feature, feature level. Yeah, so I would design um, feature level. all the, I would do all the industrial design. Um, I did 100% of the industrial design, piecing together, piecing together everything, finding, uh, you know, most cost we could, you know, which was off the shelf at the time before doing our own injection molding and, uh, and modifying them and finding ways to modify them. Uh, in a cost-effective manner, uh, and then you know designing the circuit, you know the circuit board shapes, you know, or, or at least you know providing the specs for those, um, and uh, um, structuring them up to match with the light pipes. You know, you know, getting the LEDs aligned and getting the light out there, and then um, you know making sure there is enough thermal, you know, space for you know you know thermal qualities, you know, cooling. Um, you know things we needed for that, and then uh, and also safety. You know, making sure the safety designs were in there. Um, so those were the extent, and then uh, and then for the electronics, it was uh, it was just specifying features. You know, clearly like working through our MVP and the things we wanted, and coordinating um, a, a hardware designer and electro, you know hardware and firmware designers to you know implement those in a way that we needed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so you know a lot of us you know it's like. You know that requires understanding what's what's possible and what's you know what you know is possible and what you know people can do, um, and then specifying it you know in a way they understand. And some of that re also requires pushing other people out of their bounds. You know, a lot of people like for instance, the the lighting design. I'm really particular with um, with pulse width modulation. Um, I think a lot of LEDs out there are are not responsibly designed. Like they all just flicker and and we don't notice it when we look at it, but our eyes are like dilating. It's sort of like the problem with um, uh, old fluorescent uh, ballots where they just flicker and you know it, it creates fatigue in the office space. Um, and so LEDs are doing the same thing. And uh, and so I was just, you know, I had a requirement that um, that we had a high refresh rate, you know, and, and to try to smooth it out as much as possible. And our, our firmware designer was just sort of just didn't want to do it. He's like, what are you talking about? We can't see faster than 60 hertz. You know, like, why are you bothering with this? And and it's just, you know, sort of, you know, saying it's like, this is what we want. You know, it's like, you know, here's here's what I see. And so I could show him the tests. You know, it's like, here's here's the flicker tests. And, um, you know, so I could break down like the reasons why I wanted to do this. And, you know, it's, it's an aesthetic issue. And, and mm -hmm. while people don't necessarily see, you know, people naturally blur the vision, you know, you know, uh, you know, past 60 or around 60 hertz. Um, I was looking for something that was was going to be um, that felt more analog. You know, like having an analog experience was important. So, um, you know, even though they weren't didn't want to do it and didn't didn't believe in it, um, I know it's possible. And uh, and so I just you know it's like I laid I laid down, you know, the requirements and said let's let's really make this happen. You know, it's, this is important to us. You know, and just convinced them to do it. And it turned out really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's the level of design. I'm not doing I'm not doing the hardware design, um, or I'm not doing the electronics design. You yeah. know, aside from feature requests that are reasonable and and fit within physics and reality, based yeah. on our power needs. And yep. Uh, as far as for the summer of extreme design build, mm -hmm. how is your skill in like marketing or no well, like uh, spreading the word about it too? Do you think that you can help us? any like attract more people to it or because right now like the main uh, thing is getting the word out i'm going to work on it like the finalized instructor list and the finalized curriculum I'm yeah. gonna push out a bunch of stuff there to kind of express what the thing is because we're going to focus a lot on module based design where we develop so instead like say when we tackle the say the torch table 
it will be more mm -hmm. like, okay, we're going to focus on the missing modules. Like, okay, we have the universal axis pretty well, the, the motion system, mm -hmm. but we'll focus, okay, yeah. let's, let's develop this uh, tool head. Okay. So everything is a module that we then can use for multiple applications. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to continue that throughout the program. So I wanted to communicate that message more because it's like when you hear like in the description, all the stuff that actually is going to go on, on there, it's like unbelievable. But yeah, a lot of the stuff is actually, OK, well, uh, we're going to do a CNC sawmill. Well, that's a tool head. That's a saw or even as simple as a circular saw or, uh, head on mm -hmm. a CNC gantry in three dimensions, you know, things like that. So we can start playing with a lot of different tool heads and just really pushing the limits of module based design. So part of yeah. it is to communicate that. And I think that there will be some com pretty interesting, compelling uh, material that we send out there in, in our publicity. But yeah, but back to the question, do you think that you can attract any other people to, to this? Like, um, do you have a lot of contacts and um, um, I, you know, I'll be honest and I don't, I don't think I'm great for that. Um, I can leverage my, my few contacts that are really good. You know, I've got, uh, I know people that have good contacts and, uh, and I'm good with them. And so I could, I could leverage through their means, but I don't have a personal huge social network. I'm, I'm a little more introverted that way. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I believe, so I wouldn't be relying on myself, you know, just to be honest, you know, to yeah. do that specifically to get, get a large network. Work. Uh, but if it is something that uh, that I'm involved in, um, you know, I, I, you know, Lonnie has an amazing network, and then there's another person I work with, uh, Mary Mattingly, who is the water, the the visionary for the Water Pod project. Um, you know, there's I have big people, you know, I have big personalities in my life that I could leverage and be like, hey, you know, it's like you come across a lot of people in this, you know, I would, I could, uh, I could do that, but I don't feel like I would be the person to be yeah. directly marketing, pulling in a lot of people. To be to be honest yeah 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 you yeah. know yeah do you have questions on what what the teaching experience or that like the whole workshop experience the, the summer experience would be like or is there anything yeah like yeah i do i mean i uh you know i'm curious about uh you know uh, what you see as the role coming in you know I, I see you've got a few different workshops going and they seem to be structured a little bit differently and uh you know, I'm kind of curious about what level, like, you know, am I? So the like, yeah, am I, am I developing material? Like, how much am I guiding? How how much am I teaching? How much am I participating? Um, I'm trying to figure yeah. out what my balance is and what my role is in yeah. uh, in this environment. Yeah, it's really like a steward. Like, so what I'm going to be doing there is do like two hours in the morning. One is teaching about collaborative protocol and two is like design review so that's i'll be there in the morning mm -hmm. and then at night i'll run the enterprise session we'll have like an enterprise track where we talk about mm -hmm. okay how do you start businesses around this kind of work um yeah now for the instructors so so at that point i disappear and the instructor's role is to basically steward that process so we're all learning from uh -huh. each other like it's not this yeah. like somebody has all the knowledge it's completely collaborative so right. we're develop we're developing a system. We're develop yeah, I mean it's all it's a big experiment because we haven't ever had so many people like the last time we did it in mm -hmm. twenty fourteen, we hardly had mm -hmm. any other kind of stuff we do the way we do things now. Like I think we're much more clear about how we do things. Um but right now so we're developing that for more and more people. Um mm -hmm. so it'll be the people on site. But also during the first few days, the first few days mm -hmm. of the month are going to be like like a mini steam camp to onboard yeah. the new people because I'm expecting that some people will sign up just for the month. There's two people already yeah. sign up there sign up for the whole whole summer, but there's probably going to be oh, people awesome. that uh, come up just for the month. So every month we do a, a work, basically a steam camp that's also open to the outside. And at the end of the month we do an extreme build. So basically culminating mm -hmm. all the modules that we built and we put it into something grand like. A uh, couple yeah. of day or weekend build of a tractor of an aquaponic greenhouse or something uh, that according to the schedule. But the instructor's role is to steward the process mm -hmm. and make sure right. that everyone basically follows the collaborative. Like uh, if you talk about the collaborative protocol, I'll put a link in you. I put a, I'm taking some notes on gay blog on the OSC wiki there. Uh, so I'm Great. just uh, already starting your log, but there's OSC collaboration protocol 
Um, let me go to that. Um, so I'm taking notes at, at Gay Blog. You can click on the first. So here, um, here's that. And uh, click on the OSI collaboration protocol. But what the instructors do is steward that process, which is keeping a work log, organizing, mm -hmm. looking at everybody else's work log on a team page, using a basic yeah. OSC workflow for KeyCAD, the free CAD. Mm -hmm. um, what we do is upload and download from and create part libraries that include some yeah. visual histories. Uh, we do live collaboration in embedded Google Docs and then rapid prototyping using, you can read about the second Toyota paradox that kind of describes what we do. Then there's whole a whole bit yeah. above that, which is, okay, well, how is the wiki taxonomy? What does that look like? So mm -hmm. starting development templates for all the development processes, sure. development steps of a, of a project, um, etc. So yeah, between work logs, free CAD, and this uh, constant back and forth, uh, logging, live docs, things like Scrummy. Uh, looks like Scrummy. Mm -hmm. you ever hear of Scrummy? Scrummy.com. Yeah. It's a really Scrum. cool, lightweight Scrum platform, but it looks like they shut down like last week or something. I emailed them if oh, we wow. could have the source code. But uh, right. Um, so the the teachers the instructors are guardians of the collaborative protocol and you're in it you're in it as actually yeah. create a creator and mm -hmm. if there's people in the in the in the crew like the students that can do stuff they can teach stuff too like it's it's all about sharing and collaborating and diffusion yeah. like when you're around people that have knowledge you by diffusion you also learn so it's a mm -hmm. very diverse environment where you yeah. there's many skill levels and mm -hmm. skill sets so different yeah. two dimensions and we we want to create a process that works with both because there are enough roles for everybody and everyone can co collaborate if you have the proper mm -hmm. collaboration architecture and ecology yeah. with all the different roles so um you'd be the steward of that guiding like i mean the main tool we use is freecad so that's like constant uploading and yeah. downloading to the version history of the the part libraries right um, I'm curious how you how you guys balance that so far. Like you know, you've got a whole bunch of people with many different skills and skill sets across yeah. areas. And is it more of just an organic process where you know I'm assessing, you know, I'd be assessing people's uh, skill sets and be like, okay, you're going to be doing this and this and this, or is it more of like, you know, is it more directive, or is it something that you know you first request volunteers? Do you have a process for like assigning people it's into more... these roles? It's organic. Like, okay, so we open up yeah. a Google Doc, we break up a machine into, like, say we got to design something, we break the machine up into modules and we voluntarily attach names to modules, for example. Right. That's one way. Right. So it's kind of right. self selecting. It's uh, democracy. Yeah, and everyone's already bought in already. Everyone's like, I'm here, let's do this. So, yeah, like, you know, I imagine people are like, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, or I don't know if I can do this. What, 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 and then you're like, what do you need to be able to, you know, make it, to, make, you know, be able to do that, you know? Yeah. Um, the two people yeah. so far that signed up, they're so pumped. They're like, "What? how can I learn and prepare? So we know that yeah. we've got a captive audience of people who want to do this stuff. And it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. And then how basically how do we divide it? I mean, it's going to be a lot, mm -hmm. of, a lot of fun. It's like we're tackling problems and designing cool things. So our prior experience has been, yeah, people get excited about that. And we self-select. And, and then... yeah. You know, sometimes you might have to say, well, this has to be done and we got to get somebody, but I mean, we can't, we don't believe in coercion, but, but ma proper um, encouragement or management, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, How do you see the flow going throughout the day? You know, like there's the first couple hours of just working on collaborative protocol and getting organized. There's yeah. the design review design and then there's, the, there's work and there's like work throughout the day. Yeah. And, uh, so do you see as the stewards pretty much like any time a new design is uploaded, is, is it something that just I just open up and just check and evaluate, make sure it's fitting into fitting into protocol? Okay. That's something one thing I do. Um, okay, what well, you would and be then, doing uh, going along and, yeah, and then going along and like just you know, keep keeping sort of a on on the moment, you know, awareness of each person's log in my particular team and just seeing how that's going and how it relates to our, our goals. And so I'm imagining some of that just happening continually throughout the day, but I'm kind of, I'm curious about how you see that sort of flow as a steward throughout the day. Okay, so look at this link, test-driven design. We do test-driven design. Yeah. Uh, test-driven yeah. development. Take a look at that page, and in it you'll see this scroll down to test driven iterations that bubble there it's kind of, it's a rough idea but mm -hmm. what that represents is that everything goes on at the same time 
Yeah. So right. one person might be on CAD. At that same time, mm -hmm. the, this other person's working the Google Doc doing the conceptual design. The third person is doing a prototype on a 3D printer. And the fourth person is mm -hmm. cutting on a CNC torch table. And yeah. another person is actually doing like bill of materials. Another person is, I don't know. I mean, there's a ton of roles and that's called the collaboration architecture. We architect it. Right. We make that explicit yeah. and assign roles. But um, we know that there's a certain number of steps you have to take. So mm -hmm. various steps you take. But it's like, read the article in that page I sent you on the second Toyota yeah. Paradox on how that works. But basically, it's mm -hmm. all about all kinds of prototypes at the same time. So ideally, what we do is we go from FreeCAD to a mm -hmm. working 3D printed model. And I'm thinking yeah. of actually adding little motors, little electric motors and battery packs. So mm -hmm. that before we build the tractor, we have a scale model on our table running on electric motors. Yeah, right. Something like that. Or we um not sure how where the the laser cutter is going to be at that time or doing paper based folding things that can mimic mm -hmm. the kind of stuff because the on the torch table what we do is cut flats and then weld them into three-dimensional weldments I so you that. can yeah. simulate that process using a laser cutter so we will have at <laughs> least like a four watt thin cardboard laser cutter on a d3d universe okay. that's low-hanging fruit i'm not sure if we're going to yeah. have the bigger laser but anything yeah. we do, we, we go from idea, the, the Google Docs, we go through a Scrummy, like a Scrummy is a like drag and drop Scrum board on a computer mm -hmm. that updates real time and you need no permissions. So it's like dynamically yeah. you can see, okay, the, the most relevant tasks are on top. They're moving into the doing, done, right. verify, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Between that on a Google Doc, the most prominent stuff, drag that page on top. Mm -hmm. All you do is drag that page yeah. on top, and that's the most relevant page. We're working on, our, you know, there may be other pages. But you can see the whole flow by looking at here's the work logs of the people. On a, basically, we have, like, a control room page on a wiki, like, which is going to be actually mm -hmm. X. It's going to be a page called yeah. X. It's going to have everybody's log. Right. It's going to have, okay, uh -huh. a video of the updates, maybe uh, whatever, commits, everything. Like, that. that's to be designed. That's, like, design that. Yeah. Right. Yes, absolutely. And, and design a, a smooth flow for that. So I'm imagining, you know, from what you're saying right now, that uh, that my role is going to be sort of keeping a bird's eye view on all, each of those each of those systems as mm -hmm. they're evolving, and then and then continually just checking in on ones that are dragging behind, along, you know, just checking in with people, seeing how they're doing, and encouraging the flow forward. So yeah. it sounds like I'm sort of a project manager for this system that we're developing. Yeah, but you're also a collaborator. So you're like, yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I've got, a, I've got, a, I've got a set of knowledge. Yeah, Go you've ahead. got some knowledge that you can impart. So you're, you're a teacher collaborator, yeah. but also probably most maybe like 70% steward of the process. So manager, project right. manager. Yeah. But you have to be doing engaged at least somewhat because you because uh, a good pro project manager will have done everything that other people are doing. Like you can't tell right. the welder guy how to do that or like mm -hmm. give him suggestions if you haven't welded or something. Right. So yeah. we like that kind of interdisciplinarity because that leads to better product. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, that feels good to me. Uh, I really like that. Um, yeah. It feels like it feels like a comfortable role for me. Uh, mm -hmm. Keeping keeping touch on that. I really like um, doing direct collaboration as far as like working out like you know what to what to do how to accomplish you know say say it is with welding say we're working with the uh, you know CNC. Mm -hmm. See, what do you call the CNC welding device? It's a CNC torch t table. I mean, that's torch that's table that's for that's cutting. cutting. But yeah, CNC well, torch are table. you also working on a? Were you also? Do you have a plan where you're doing a like a, a, a metal build, uh, sort of like 3D metal printing? Yeah. Wire you know, welding equipment. Wire yeah, wire additive manufacturing. Yeah, we're going to do that the first uh, month. So ideally, uh, cool. by the second month, we are we're prototyping in metal 3D prints, large plastic mm -hmm. prints. Yeah, like the whole thing. We want to, so so the way we can tackle it is by breaking it into the modules as much as we can. Because because that what you just said is called a MIG welder handle on a 3D gantry, right? Yeah. So it's about integrating yeah. that. We have those parts. That's a mm -hmm. simple experiment, and then you refine it. Right. But that's how yeah. we're gonna operate. Just, you know, we yeah. start from the building blocks and we build up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And refine. So it's functional. I mean, it's like. You know, the MTU guys, Dr. Pierce, Joshua Pierce, 
who I think you know the name. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he, you know, he's done his prototype of the, the welder thing, but I mean, that's not going to be practical. It's a small prototype. For us, it's like, okay, now pay attention to make sure the spatter doesn't get on an axis, uh, make it a large machine mm -hmm. to, to build real parts, and something that's actually functional and easy to build right. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Now, for example, I mean, the, the start of a, of a project could be, okay, so we've got, we want to design this. Well, I'll come in there and say, hey, uh, we want to do a trencher. Or something. Right. We want to do the aquaponics. Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, we we'll, we start with the standard process requirements. What do we what do we need in there? Yeah. There's stuff that we know already. There's stuff that we've done mm -hmm. that we can build upon. So yeah. you always go back into industry standards. You you build upon it. Use the, use the knowledge that's there. Yes. Yeah. And we can start. Okay. So how do we? So say we're clear on the modules that have to be developed. Like we can prioritize it. Then we say okay. Uh, let's start developing. So we might draw up some concept docs on a on a Google Doc then go into mm -hmm. CAD and then go into prototyping. But all these things, like once we get into the flow of something, like all that can be done iteratively in a rapid time scale. And we also use very yeah. large nozzles, 1.2 nozzles default so that we print things like three to 10 times faster. So the prototyping is really rapid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Really great. Let's see, let me see if I have another question on here. I think I may. Um... Okay, so I, I, I'd love to just hear your take and see if you have any additions. You know, I just, uh, you know, I'm working on my perceptions of what, you know, what I imagine this role to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I've sort of deduced, uh, you know, I mentioned in the email, three primary components to enforcing process, you know, to being a steward. And um, and so as, you know, you, you know, there's a large part of that job that's technical, you need to understand all the different components so you can actually interact with people and, and instruct wisely. Uh, but the other side of the job is the interpersonal one. And I think these sort of hit those ones, um, or at least some of them do. And one of them is just sort of like, I sort of deduce the idea is empathy with a tactic for encouragement. Like you're really trying to like, you know, it's like understand where the person's coming from, understand what they know, and uh, and encourage them to take on projects that are, are suitable for them. You know, that may be a challenge and they'll do. So that's sort of one area that, uh, that I my role would be and another one is you know just really being personally available like i'm we're in there it's a collaboration um uh you know i have a bird's eye view of everything everything that's going on anytime there's an issue like i imagine they're coming to me first you know it's like yeah. just like here's you know deal with questions and you know you know deal with guidance you know it's like help people out along the way and then um and then the other one is uh it's really just having a solid sense for uh your protocols, you know, the OSC protocols anyway, you know, to be able to communicate and, and help people understand the whole objectives, you know, be able to communicate the big picture in the context of the OSC paradigms, protocols, the specifications and, and design principles. And so sort of like structuring what we're actually doing with that sort of framework. And so those are, those are the three sort of like, I don't know, things I was able to distill my position. And I'm wondering if there is other fundamental things that uh, you see, or if you see those, you know, I'd, I'd like to know, hear your opinion on those, but also if there's more to add to that. Okay, so to repeat, so being available to help, technical guidance, Yeah. what was the third one? I'm gonna just, I'll just send you um, my little quick text on that, because I wrote, wrote them down. They're not really organized, but here we go. Is this what you just wrote, wrote down right now? Yeah, I wrote it down before our meeting because I just, you know, it's something I, I was just trying to, you know, get a grasp on this role. So I wanted to clarify it for myself before chatting with you. Yeah, yeah, that's that's about it. Now, the other part okay, is cool. like being technical guidance, but being involved, this is hands on. Like you're not teaching yeah. this. this you're, you're doing it with the people. Your, your sleeves are rolled yeah. up. Uh, I'm, I'm doing stuff too, yeah, which I love because I, I like doing. You know? Yeah. Um, um, are you, uh, would you consider yourself being good on empathy? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm excellent with empathy. Um, you know, I'm, you know, I'm pretty, I'm hard, you know, like, you know, I'm, 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 uh, I'm technical, I'm, I try to be accurate, uh, but, uh, but I feel like I'm pretty good, I feel like I'm really good with empathy. Um, just understanding where people are coming from, uh, being sensitive to if they're being challenged or pushed pushed too far or pushed hard, um, and recognizing that and uh, and bringing it back if, if needed, and really focusing on what they can do. 
Um, yeah. I feel like I'm pretty aware of people's emotional states in, in sort of a fast building environment. Um, some of that requires me not taking as much. You know, my tendency is to really dive in and really work on stuff. And so um, that's something that I would be focusing on a little bit for myself is, you know, I would want to be diving in a lot more than normal, but I have to really consider my job um, uh, managing the group as one of the main things I'm working on. You know, I may be taking on, it's like, okay, let's let's start hacking these, hacking these, um, these Raspberry Pis or Arduinos to, you know, to do these movements that we want, you know, whatever. Like, I, I love that stuff. But, uh, but um, you know, maintaining the priority of managing the people is, is going to be my role, even though I might be jumping into other stuff. And that's important for me because um, if I get too technical and detail-oriented on one of those things, you know, I could stop paying attention to people. But when I am paying attention to people, I feel like I'm really good. Um, so that's something for myself to manage, for my, you know, on my on my own. I really stop and, you know, take time to see where people are at. And I think part of that process is, you know, keeping on top of everyone's logs. You know, you know, if I'm on top of everyone's logs and looking at what people are producing, and then going to the teams and checking in with them, uh, I think that part's pretty easy. You know, it's like as long as that's there. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm pretty good with uh, with empathy and mm -hmm. keeping people going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I think there's a lot of it. A lot of it is, uh, you know, what the intention is behind it. Like, you know, and the intention for me is like we're, we're, we're developing something together. You know, it's not necessarily about us in, in, individuals. We all have something that we, we can bring. Um, but really, like, how can you take what you have and your skills and what you're doing right now and really contribute to the group? And, you know, working from that as a foundation, I think, is really helpful. Like, you know, this is a collaborative work. We're all doing this together. We're in this together. And, you know, and we're supporting each other. So, yeah, are you jumping on some jumping on somebody else. No, no, no. Uh, oh, okay, the screen was messed up, so I jumped to a different screen. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, cool. that sounds good. Would you would you be um, like if are you saying that it might be too stressful for you to manage like the empathy level or like if you had to do like that part like a community manager you wouldn't like that role but you would like more of a technical like what if we said. Uh, or would you be open to also being a community manager? No, I think I'm, I think I'm really good. I think I'd be really good at the steward role. And I, I was just sort of uh, um, admitting knowledge about myself, about yeah. my like I, my, my propensity to dive in deep um, uh, on a focus level on my own on my own thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, so if all of a sudden I was assigned one of the projects or I took on one of the projects, um, it's just something my own knowledge about myself, like. Uh, if I'm going in and programming something myself, and that you know takes some focused skill, it's something that I just know myself enough to recognize it. You know, every you know every 45 minutes to an hour, I'm just going to stop, put that aside, and really check up on everyone else, like because that's my role, you know. And so, um, my you know, I have a love for diving into the detail on individual on individual products. You know, like if I was if I was you know, if I was in charge of a particular module, like I would love it. You know, I, I love that kind of work. Um, mm -hmm. And and so I've done a lot of that that kind of work where I dive in and figure something out and and find solutions to problems. Um, and that's and so and that's one of the things I feel like I have to bring. You know, I have a lot of experience in different areas that I can you know apply and, and help share with other people doing that. Um, you know, so that's that's a work style that I really like, and um, and uh, and it's also something that. Can contribute to this role, but it's also something that I will I would keep in check because uh, because when I'm in that role, I get into I, you know I get into a very programmatic mindset, which for me isn't the same as being an empathic. You know, if I spend all day on the computer, I'm used to action reaction, knowing that I can fix something and just press a button and have it happen. You know, and and so um, you know I've noticed in my past when I spend all day working on uh, you know a programming issue, then all of a sudden I go out in the world and talk to people. I'm like you know, I'm, I'm much more curt. And so it's something I'm aware of for myself, you know, it's like mm -hmm. switching gears to human interaction is very, is, is a, is sort of a different gearbox than, than computer interaction or, yeah. you know, um, technical problem solving interaction. And, uh, and so I, you know, I think I, I recognize those differences and can identify them. And I think that's good. And I also think there's a benefit to the focus work. Um, mm -hmm. I do good work in that state. Uh, but it's something that I just, you know, will check on on myself, make sure I don't dive too much into 
my yeah. particular module because my, my I'm considering my main role as managing other people, and that's a that's a powerful position. It's a responsibility to make sure everyone else is being very productive. Yeah. Um, and as far yeah. as um, you know, the schedule, basically, like the, everything builds cumulatively to the the final, you know, like the construction stuff, because that's where we're we're building upon the uh, say mm -hmm. the machines, like the tractors and other equipment, and then the 3D printing that gets better and better. Like by the end of it, we want to print large panels for structural mm -hmm. modules for building and plastic lumber yeah. and stuff like that. But uh, would you also be be interested in, because uh, we have to kind of spread the instructors between the three months and yeah. uh, would the second month be interesting as well to you? Which is Yeah, the, the second month looks very interesting to me. Which um, is about machines, more machines. Like uh, the idea is that we'll start with a simple printer. We're going to go into like so like eight millimeter rods, like on a small printer, we make larger mm -hmm. machines with one inch rods and then we go to two inch rods and then we go mm -hmm. to three inch rods. I mean, l very heavy duty axes uh, that we should get in. Yeah. Like we'll be getting into the three inch stuff a lot in yeah. the second month. But by that time too, like we should have, if we have the two inch or one inch axis stuff going, that's sufficient for the, the big uh, panel printer. So by mm -hmm. the first month, we're aiming that we have that at some level of completion that's probably functional. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's kind of the flow. Like we're, we're continuing to build on the modules. Uh, so I'm just asking yeah, if the second month would also be for you. Immediately, one of, my, one of my strengths that I feel like I could contribute to that is uh, I, I love testing equipment, you know, for a specific task. You know, mm -hmm. um, whenever I'm doing, you know, laser cutting, you know, for example, you know, I, you know, I get to know the machine, you know, I figure out what, what, what it's capable of with, with the particular materials I'm working with. And so I, uh, I really enjoy designing sets of tests that allow you to, um, you know, to cut your projects better. You know, it's like, it's really nice to know. It's like, okay, we can vary intensity or PWM. Yeah. You know, and like, mm -hmm. you know, what produces the best results for what we're trying to accomplish and, and what are the boundaries for those? And so I, I really enjoy, you know, devising tests that help people understand that. And, and so many people just skip those and just try to like, just, just cut oh. it and often, get, and often get really crappy results. And so, yeah. um, I think, I think it's a really valuable thing to, to do and then document. So, Absolutely. you know, for the people that just want to skip to it, at least you have that. And so that's something that I feel like I can bring, like, I enjoy that process uh, immensely. You know, I'd like to, I'd like to find the, the limits and what you can do. And also in that, you know, when you're working with the mm -hmm. edges of what, what, what the capabilities are, what the precautions are, like, okay, you're going to burn out the motor if you do this for more than two minutes or whatever, you know, it's like, it's, it's really nice to know what the limits are and really, you know, you know, set those sort of in stone for people. And, you know, mm -hmm. if you're going to change things, you might have to change your hardware. Well, that's know, actually but, uh, most most relevant in month two, like when we scale the things yeah. up. Um, right. So you'd be you'd be also into uh, doing the July month as opposed to uh, August. Month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be up into that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, right now, because right now we're we have three people for the month of August, and mm -hmm. getting four. I mean, it's a question of literally the the business model behind this and so right getting enough people there. enough people to show up so we can pay yeah. instructors and stuff like that yeah so, because yeah yeah well you know what i can be i can be somewhat flexible about that you know like i, I you know i i'm super excited about your process and jumping yeah. in um, and uh i'd be stoked on you know month three uh, I feel like I could contribute a lot to month two as well. And, but I'm, I'd be open to being flexible on that, depending on if we get enough students, mm -hmm. um, and just mm -hmm. keeping in touch about it. Yeah. Um, because I, because my, my time is a little bit flexible right now. Um, so, you know, I might have to just adjust a couple things, you know, you know, there's a couple things in California. I'll be in California by then. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm open to being somewhat flexible, at least, you know, at least earlier on, like as the time comes near, we might have to just decide, okay, you're yeah, not going to yeah. come in. We don't have, or, or we got the students, let's do this, you know? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So I'm open to being flexible for the, for the month of July um, on that, depending on, you know, fitting the, you know, the business model being satisfied. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but yeah, I really, I, I love the production stuff, you know, I mean, that stuff's great. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, uh, you know, I, I, it'd be really fun to, to guide people on how to like, you know, on how to, yeah. you know, devise so, their system of use. Yeah. So, so you're saying basically data collection and performance, basically performance <laughs> testing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love of, that I mean, stuff. That's, that's very important. Yeah. I mean, that's part of the stuff we have to do. I mean, we have to get some data. Yeah. Okay, what are the forces right. involved and as much mm -hmm. data as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice to collect that and have it organized and ready for analysis. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, some of that some of that is data analysis. Some of that is just, you know, more analog using our brains. Like, what's our experience with this? You know, and, yeah. and I think recording that's really important as well. You know, yeah. like what, you know. You know, yeah, I, I think a feeling, if you, if you understand your materials, I think a feeling is really important. Be like, you know, it just seems like I'm pushing this a little bit hard, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it's like, then you explore that a little bit or just, you know, acknowledge it and maybe go easy on something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then start with starting with calculations because we'll start with calculations. Okay, so here's the materials at hand. Here's deflection calculations, mm -hmm. how much the yeah. belt can pull, torques and motors. And we can match yeah. that to our actual results, and that—that's the kind of process we're kind of short on because nobody lo uh, likes doing that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, so that yeah, would be valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's pretty fun. I mean, it's an essential component of engineering, you know, yeah. of, the, of the engineering. You can always just overbuild stuff, and right. Uh, but it's nice—it's nice to have an idea about like where things are fitting in, like, you know, and I, you know, I, I can't claim to be an expert because something I I I love I really enjoy. You know, it's really cool to find. You know, find areas. It's like, oh, you know, we could be using a thinner rod or whatever. You know, this motor is overpowered for this particular position. We could save a little money here. Mm -hmm. It's nice to know that kind of stuff. Um, and then it's also nice to have a, you know, sort of a database of of how you manage different materials. You know, it's mm -hmm. like for, you know, for cutting one material or another. Like, how do, how does this machine work with the different things? And what do you really want to, you know, what area do you want to, you know, set the machine to? Yeah. You know, which are important. You know. When, when we're switching and and some of those are essential like you know some of those you have to write in big red letters be like are you switching to wood for this cutter like these are the settings you have to change you know yeah, <laughs> like yeah. it's what you need to do yeah stuff like that um, okay yeah um yeah so anything can, else you want to ask about yes i wrote one other thing um hmm <laughs> I thought I wrote it down. No, I don't know right now. If I if I think of it, I'll ask you. I'll send yeah. you a quick email. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, I did think of it. Um, I was curious about uh, as we're, you know, how me and the other stewards are collaborating with each other and how we're planning yeah. the days. Like, so that's kind of. I was curious of... about that and how the how the how the different like education modules like if we're teaching something, how does that go? Right. So we want to have as much collaboration as possible so that's of course uh, a basic mm -hmm. principle and once we have once we kind of really determine how many people are showing up and like well as we get closer and and even right now we kind of i initially it was like i was thinking the idea was okay one teacher and you kind of working with 12 students but I'm also mm -hmm. open to, okay, let's have a larger group process where we take the same project and do a larger group process on it. So it really depends, but I, I'm open to suggestions on it. Right now I was thinking uh, because, I mean, some days are cut out already. Like, okay, the first four days we're building our printers and the other machines, like the first four days. And then we say, okay, what are we doing right now? Well, I guess for the filament maker it makes sense that everyone does that we don't want to like spread one group to like the next project which is like say the high temperature enclosure or whatever right um nail out because for example the filament making is so fundamental to what we want to do we want to just crank out uh -huh. filament throughout the whole process like see if we can actually make commercial grade filament but after three months right. So yeah. we'll start it immediately and probably makes sense right there to say, okay, we'll all work on it. We'll swarm because it's an important part. So in some parts right. we might say, okay, let's everybody focus on it. But in other parts, okay, maybe we just divide project by project. I do like uh -huh. the idea of, of more kind of the more the merrier because you'll see that because any development step and like you break down a thing and it's like 12 modules already and, and 36 people are not going to be enough to do all the steps there anyway. So I'd prefer mm -hmm. to do more, um, more people on the same project, because uh, actually, like, yeah. even like twelve, like, sounds a lot. The way we break things down, that gets to be a lean process very quickly. In other words, it's like you can only do so much, even with twelve people. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, yeah, it's like, so and it takes time. You know, 
yeah, it takes time. And, and, and people are learning along the way, which takes a little yeah. bit more time, you know. So. Right. So probably more like swarm throughout. And we want to keep it as uh-huh. interesting as possible for people. And I think, think we can. So we'll be mixing the rapid prototyping throughout. So I think with the kind of collaboration ecology we're, we're doing with between design, concept, prototyping, testing, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think it probably fits better to do to do the whole whole group doing that. You know. Yeah. Now, if it's we a, get sounds- like forty eight people showing up, then we might say, okay, uh-huh. let's break into two groups of twenty four. But if yeah. we got yeah. like twenty four, then uh, no, like let's let's all swarm on the same thing, something like that. It sounds like regardless of the numbers, though, <clears throat> the coordinators or the stewards are going to be wanting to sort of regularly check in with each other. Oh, yeah. It's probably somewhere in your protocols and just be like, just really evaluate, like, how did this go? How yeah. can we improve it? Like, should we, should we be, be combining groups more or separating yeah. them more? And, yeah. uh, and we're sort of getting a for that, like, with each other, like, yeah. continually, well, like, almost every day, probably. Yeah, yeah, and we'll kind of, like, evolve the process. But, like, my role in the morning is going to be, okay, product review, yeah. process review. Like, okay, how's everything working? Yeah. And check in and yeah. keep evolving. Because... My goal is to stay out of there, out of the weeds as much as possible. So I have the biggest, like you guys come in, okay, here's your logs. I can check the stuff. Uh, we have basically product demos every morning or whatever, like the mm-hmm. stand up, scrum stand up, whatever. Um, but I'm kind of from the higher view saying, okay, are we meeting our principles? How does this mm-hmm. fit to our collaborative design for a transparent and inclusive economy of abundance mission? Mm-hmm. And how does this yeah. adhere to OSC specifications? So I'll be I'll be yeah. providing that kind of insight, and, and both on a product and on a process and on a team side, because it's all it's all in there, it's all related. So I, I'll I'll give feedback on that, and then it's mm-hmm. but it's all collaborative. We're all we're all in it together. That's the kind of deal. Like I don't want to be standing right. out as like oh yeah I'm like running this thing because that that wouldn't work. Like no, we, no. we are not, really yeah we're really saying that we're gonna lower the boundaries. And we're not going to be have the superstars because more lower skilled or um, more diversely skilled people they can do better. Like the the integrated perspective yeah. is more important to us. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious if there's like there's a set of questions that will um, evolve yeah. or that will that will become you know evident at each of the sort of the stages of organization that are yeah. really essential to just ask. You know, like every day there's like just a fundamental set of questions just to get the conversation going, but also that are essential to answer. Like, you know, you know, some of these questions at your level are super important, but they probably translate to a different set of questions mm-hmm. as we hear them mm-hmm. and need to convert them to the, the rest of the students and things like that. So it'd be really interesting to start collecting those, you know, as yeah, far absolutely. as like, you know, this, just, we're all just to help create it. Guide, yeah, just to help guide those processes, you know, each of those collaboration, each of those moments where you get together and talk about the process and what's, you know, where we are now and where we are in the future. Yeah. You know where we want to go in the future. Like, what what are, what is the appropriate set of questions to ask for that moment? You know, in yeah. in the in the design phase, um, I'm really I, I'm particularly interested in in differentiating those throughout the different phases and the yeah. different roles in yeah. the organization. Yeah, that's um, good. And we're practicing for a larger process because this we haven't seen anything yet. So we're building. Yeah. Like, for yeah. example, with incentive challenge, like. For one, this is practice for a much larger challenge where now we're doing deliberate development with 36 people, but in a challenge, it's likely it's going to be 2,000 people. So really, we got to right. make sure our wiki is ready and stuff like that. But once we spawn the incentive challenge, so part of it during the summer, I'll be probably doing half the time on preparing that as well uh, on a cordless drill. But when we launch that, there's going to be the people from the steam camps from the summer they're all capable of already understanding the development process, but we're going to kick it off with that, as I mentioned, with Mitch Altman, uh, 10 or 20 events at the same time, uh, lots of people uh, kicking off that yeah. event, and then the challenge where people sign up for it, but they have to learn the protocols. They have to learn. We have to dis- be able to right. distill this to this thing you can learn in like three hours. Three yeah, hours, yeah. and you're, you're able to do free CAD, understand how to document stuff, understand how to collaborate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, each of those, you know, each of those pose a challenge for different people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nice to have that clear, you know, clear, a, a clear process for people to understand. Um, cool. And I, you know, and I see there's a lot of, there is a lot of uh, work to help clarify that on the wiki also. And it's be nice to see that um, develop as well throughout this process, you know, as yeah. far as, uh, you know, getting, getting this information really easily accessible and uh, in line. Um, that's something I would like to play with. 
Definitely. As well. So start with yeah. the link. So you saw a gay blog on the wiki? Mm -hmm. I have a yeah. link, the Aussie collaboration protocol. Start with that and see where that takes you. Yeah. 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 That's that's actually I started with that um, with one of your first emails. And, and then uh, actually, if you want to start looking at what other the students are already there, uh, I'm going to uh -huh. add a link to uh, Daniel log. Great. And then Benoit. Cool. Um, both of them, I have videos of them on, on their logs. Uh, if you take a look at those, the videos. No, right. Daniel, I don't have a yep. video. Uh, but there's a video with uh -huh. Benoit where we went over a comparable discussion to what we we're talking about, like just a lot of the stuff of what, how it's going to work. So you can review that yeah. that video. Great, great. And there's cool. a bunch of more log, more links on that page, so you can follow the paper trail. Yeah. Fun. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And so I'll let you know my thoughts like in the next few days. So we, we really have to publish like the final. So let's kind of like maybe go back and forth a little bit. Um, but I want to publish basically like the, the final announcement, the clarity on how this is going to work and all the updated instructors by about like in about a week or two okay. before the okay. 22nd. So we'll be in touch on that. Like, I mean, you you seem like a would be a very nice addition t for our program in terms of like the process management, definitely. I think that'll be really yeah. valuable. So let me think about how, how that could fit in mm -hmm. and go from there. Yeah. Um, that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Great. So let's, okay, cool. let's keep in touch, keep shooting questions. And I'll also continue to communicate on email with you and see yeah. where it goes. Great, great, okay. fun. Thank you for this meeting. It's really great to chat with you in person for a little bit. Yeah, okay. And okay. Uh, a little more insight. Yeah. Okay. See you later. Thanks. I'm in Thailand. Everyone does this. Okay. Uh, Sody clap. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe if you come, he'll teach us some dance because uh, it's yeah, all right. about an integrated yeah, experience. Yeah, so well, at the end, the end, you know, just like, you know, clap, clap. It's, you know, it's another form of collaboration, you know? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool, cool. stuff. See okay. you later. Take care. Bye-bye.